Stoichiometry is one of the more difficult topics for chemistry students, but by the end of this video you'll be able to do typical stoichiometry problems with confidence and with accuracy. We'll use these steps here to guide our work, and then we have this mole map to help us visualize the mechanics of changing between moles and grams in other units. If you need to brush up on molar mass or converting between grams and moles, in the description for this video you'll find links to help you do that. So let's get started. This is a typical stoichiometry problem, and we'll follow these steps here to find the solution. First thing we need to do is balance the equation. The next thing is we want to write what we have, what we're given, and what we want to find, the desired quantity. So we're trying to find how many grams of carbon dioxide. So that'll be, call it X, and then we're given grams of oxygen gas. So we have 17.2 grams of oxygen gas. So we know what we're looking for, we know the information we have, and we have a balanced equation. And one way to help us visualize this is to use something called the mole map. So I'm going to put a mole map right here. And our first step is to convert the grams of the given to moles. So what we'll do is talk about the strategy first, then we'll do the math. So we have 17.2 grams, and to go from grams to moles, we'll divide by the molar mass. So we're going from grams to moles, and we're talking about oxygen here right now. So that's our first step. Then we need to use the mole ratio to figure out moles of the carbon dioxide. So we'll have our mole ratio here, and that's the bridge between moles oxygen and moles carbon dioxide. So let's put another mole map out here. So our mole ratio, that'll get us moles of CO2. And once we have moles of CO2, we just multiply by the molar mass of CO2, and that'll give us grams, and we're done. So that's our strategy. The rest is just doing some math. So let's do that math. We have our grams. We're trying to get to moles. So we have 17.2 grams of oxygen. We're going to divide by the molar mass. And the molar mass of oxygen, if you look up oxygen on the periodic table, that's 16.00, but it's O2. Multiply that by 2. 32.00 and grams per mole. So when we divide, grams are going to cancel out. We'll be left with moles. And we'll have 0 0.54 moles of oxygen molecules. So we've changed the moles of oxygen, and now we need to multiply by our mole ratio. We get our mole ratio from the balanced equation, these coefficients here. And this is the only time we use the coefficients. We don't use it when we're changing from grams to moles or with the molar mass. The only time we use the coefficients is in the mole ratio. So it's a two to one ratio. For every two moles of oxygen, I'll get one mole of carbon dioxide. So you can kind of tell this is just going to be cut in half, 2 to 1. But let's write it out. The easy way to remember this is the desired over the given. So we're trying to find moles of CO2, and we're given moles of oxygen. So from the balanced equation, we have 1 mole of CO2 for every 2 moles of oxygen. So when we multiply 0.54 times the 1, Divide by 2, we get 0 0.27 moles of CO2. And we know that for sure, moles of oxygen, they cancel out. All we have to do now is get moles of CO2 to grams. So we're going to multiply by the molar mass of CO2. We end up with 11.88 grams of CO2. And that's our answer. So it seems like a lot, but really all we're doing is changing what we're given, grams to moles, using a mole ratio to get moles of the other compound, and then changing to grams of that compound. This is the same process for almost every stoichiometry problem. With a little practice, this becomes second nature. So pause and give this one a try. It's really the same question. We start out with O2, and instead of carbon dioxide, we're looking for CH4, methane. So for this one, we already have a balanced equation. I wrote that I have 54 grams of O2, and I'm looking for grams of CH4. So I took my 54.0 grams of O2. I divided by the molar mass of O2. That got me moles of O2 multiplied by my mole ratio to figure out moles of CH4, which I then multiplied by the molar mass of CH4 to get grams. My final answer, 13.5 grams of CH4. Let's do another one. This time, let's start with liters. 
So let's balance the equation first. Bam. Now let's write what we're given. And we're given liters. So that's kind of new, but no problem. We have 74.6 liters of that chlorine gas. And we want to know the mass of the Na. So mass is going to be grams. So we want to figure out grams of the Na, of the sodium. So the difference here is we start with liters, but we can convert liters to moles, use our mole ratio to find the moles of sodium, and then change that to grams. So here's how I would set that up. So I have my liter 74.6 liters, and then I divide that by 22.4, and the units are actually moles per liter for that conversion factor. And I can see liters cancel out. I end up with my moles of chlorine gas multiplied by my mole ratio. We have a two to one ratio of the sodium to the chlorine. And we know we're right because chlorine on top and bottom cancels out and we're left with the sodium, moles of sodium. That's what we wanted. So we multiply those numbers. We get 6.67 moles of sodium. We multiply the moles of sodium by the molar mass. And that gives us grams of sodium. And since I have 0.6 here, I really should just have 0.3 in my final answer. So it's the same process if we're working with liters, grams, or even particles like molecules and atoms. Let's do one more problem, and then at the end of the video, there's a link to even more practice problems. Pause and solve this one. So the big difference with this problem is that we're given grams of the product and we're asked to find some grams of the reactants. It's a little bit reversed, but just remember, we're given these grams, so that's what we're going to start out with. We're trying to find moles of NH3 and we have 85.2 grams. We find those moles, we multiply by our mole ratio, and in this case, we have three moles of hydrogen for every two moles of the ammonia. Once we get the mole ratio, we get moles of H2 multiplied by the GFM to get back to grams. There is one more way we could write this, and you'll see this sometimes. It's quite useful. Sometimes you'll see people put everything together in this kind of picket fence setup. It's really just what we did before. You take what you start with. Here we're changing from grams to moles. We're basically dividing by the GFM of ammonia, just like we did down here. We're using our mole ratio same mole ratio we have here. That would get us moles, which we multiply by the molar mass to get grams, which is what we just did here, and you get the same answer. So this really isn't any different than what we did before. We just kind of combined everything. The value with this is now we could cross out grams, we can cross out moles of ammonia, moles of hydrogen, and we're going to be left with our grams of hydrogen. So it's nice because we know that we've canceled the units out and we end up with grams but we also do that here. So either way, you'll get the same answer. This is something to aspire towards. So hopefully by now you're comfortable with balanced equations and then using moles and the mole ratio to find the moles of the products or reactants and then change those to grams. There's links to more practice at the end of this video. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.